All right, and we're back again with another design review, this time about visualization. And are you going to tell me about ArrayPlot 3D? Mm -hmm. It's on the list here. It is. Oh, there it is, my friend. Okay, great. All right, where do we start? Um, updated design for uh, updated I'm aesthetic sorry. design for the slice vector plots and uh, some of the stream plots. So that's follow on from the, all these vector plot updates we did for twelve one. So we went to a case where we have fixed length arrows, and then that. and colors yep. indicate. Um, Magnitude. Intensity. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This so is this. Say, this yeah. is the corresponding aesthetic update. In three D. Yes. We did three D, the vector plot three D, but this is slice. We just didn't have time to do this one too at the time. I have no very strong opinion about this, except that except that shouldn't have jumped, but I don't know why it jumped like that. Um, what is the purple? What, what, what is the color palette here? Uh, dark is close to zero and increasing toward yellow. Looks like sunset colors. Yeah. Why was the, is 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 Tim here? Can he speak to this stuff? It, it's the same palette that Vectorplot is using. It's but now these things got their noses stuck in the water. That's not new. One thing that we had to update is that those surfaces, which are there to basically provide depth queuing, mm -hmm. they were all yellow before because we had all blue arrows. So we couldn't, they couldn't be yellow. They had to be a neutral backdrop. And it took us quite a few iterations before we kind of found this. Because they, they're there to provide depth queuing, but not dominate. I understand. Do we have anybody from design here? If we're going to do a bunch of these visual things, we really should ask Jeremy to join. Can somebody I can do give that? him a call. Thank you. Um, well, okay, so what's the, is there any question here? I mean, this looks okay. I mean, this stuff is pretty hard for humans to understand. Yeah. I think you have to compare relative to what was there in 12.1. So if you just open uh, a regular one. Oh, it looks much spiffier than that. Yeah. OK, so this was the old version. Ali on our live stream is commenting that many WFR functions for visualization should be incorporated in the core language. Yes, except it takes 10 times longer to d get them at the level of quality necessary for the core language. We are fully aware of this flow. The whole idea of function repository is deliver it faster, but at lower quality. Yeah. And it can also be much more tuned for different groups, which we can never. I mean, we would need a thousand of these functions then to, to tune it to all these. Right. Although we do intend to have more visualization functions, it's just that it takes effort to make them general enough. It does. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know, this is clearly nicer. I mean, it feels a little bit, I don't know. I mean, presumably there are different plot themes for this. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what happens if I, if I ask for, for example, let's take this one here. I don't know why the first example is a, is a, is a, is a, center planes example rather than a um, generic example, but whatever. Okay, so then this one is that. Okay, so now if I say plot theme arrow scientific, for example. <laughs> Why is that more scientific? I, it's following the color schemes used 
you know, within the scientific plots. Um, so how did that encode magnitude? Yeah. Um, I think there's some, something wrong here. It's basically not there. Right. I'll check that with Tim. Um, Like, are you sure that these conical arrows are a good idea? I think they're definitely easier to, well, they're definitely easier to, to understand than I think the, the flat ones that just sort of, the signpost ones that just sort of rotate magically. I think these ones can often be a little confusing to look at. Yes. Especially as you rotate. I just think. I mean, it has some very hedgehoggy type feel. This thing. All right. Let's see whether are we are we getting Jeremy here? The, um. Okay. Let's keep going though. All right. Stream plot yeah. is um, now our vector plots are really nice. <laughs> okay, and now the stream plots look really boring. And okay, one thing so that they the didn't idea? show show yeah. was the magnitude again of the field. Mm -hmm. So you're proposing here with stream plots to use color coding for the magnitude. Is that the idea? Right. Yes. And it would be consistent then with vector plot and so on. Is that not already? Uh, I feel like I've, I've done this before, at least with like geo stream plot, where you can set some option to set either the thickness or the color or something like that for them to, to correspond to the magnitude, unless I'm misremembering. I'm not sure about the thickness. Um, I, I mean, you, you could always do it yes. via stream color function. Um, and, and this is just turning it on by default. Um. There's a question on the live stream about list vector plot 3D. So is that, this would work for list. This is a list vector plot 3D, isn't it? Or did I, am I confused here? It, no. It's calling list vector plot 3D under the hood. Right. Um, but what's the slicery here? So this would just be, this is list vector plot 3D, correct? Uh, that's vector plot 3D. Yeah, vector plot 3D. But, you know, same thing. Oh, oh yeah, right. Right, and so that you have, you know, what's frequently an over dense. No, this is this is incorrect. The, the, I mean, some bug with the scientific whatever. Okay, but so there's our. So these arrows. Boy. I don't know. I mean, I, I, you, I'm sure you've done experiments with the size of the, of the arrowhead relative to everything else, and so on. And you really need that large and arrowhead to make this work. I mean, in, right. I mean, so especially for 3D, you know, we were, you know, trying to make sure that we had enough to see against having enough space that you can sort of see through. What happens if you have grid lines? Face grids? Well, is face grids or can you have grid lines in the? Okay, what happens if I say face grids? Nothing interesting. Yeah. And it there's is... no meaningful volumetric lines here. I don't think so. Um, I mean, they think... just sort of become <clears throat> dense and obscure things again. Part of what we learned was that um, even when doing examples for vector plot, this vector plot 3D, was that the time where you could actually see it and understand it was when you cut it and put them on a surface. I see. As a backdrop, you know, it might be a sphere or something like that. And, um, and that's what slice plot automates and make slice vector plot 3D automates and make that very easy to achieve. So essentially only the ones that live only the ones that live in the surface are visualized here, right? Correct. Right. Which is why all of them get poked through in some way or another. Right. Although one could imagine a different picture where all that's shown is the projection on that surface of the vector. 
Wait, but what if it's pointing directly away from this, like like ten? It would be a dot. Yeah, you know, the projection oh, is boring in that case. But I mean, well, but you don't know which way it's pointing. If it's pointing normal, you don't know if it's pointing out or in. That's the dot. Yeah, unless you put a circle around the dot. I mean, that's what the convention, right, for flux and. Um, and that's the same thing, you know, if, whatever way it points, if it's an arrow going, let's say, up along the surface, you don't know if it points up out of the surface or towards you. You don't know which. No, but there's a convention. Like in electrodynamics, there's a convention that you put a circle around the arrow, you have X's around the arrow and things. Yeah, but it's often hard to, those are, those are often really hard to, like you have to look at them for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, and And also, you know, I think it, the whole point is that you can rotate around this and so on. I think it's kind of. That's true. That's true. And you don't want to have to put iconography in there because then you can't rotate it. There's also the issue of, I'm pretty sure that unless you do a little bit of slightly hacky stuff, that if you apply a texture to just totally, you know, two dimensional object embedded in 3D, that it'll have the same texture on both sides. Right. And so you won't be able to do the, you know, Oh, you won't see. be able to have it look different on each side. I mean, there are hacky ways you can probably get around that, but no, it's not even hacky. You just use face form with two textures. Oh, okay. Never mind then. <laughs> okay. Which is perhaps obscure, but I don't think it's hacky. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I thought I thought I didn't know you could. I didn't know it had that option. Okay. Now, this is the this is the beginning of high dimensional visualization, Stephen, and that's more to come. There's two functions today. This is some kind of radar plot thing. Is that right? Exactly. Yes. It has, goes by many names. Popular children have many names, right? <laughs> so. Why are you calling it radial access plot? I mean, it's an okay name. Because we have parallel axis. I mean, it, the, the fun thing is, I was look, I was working on some docs this after you know, earlier today, and was thinking oh, maybe it should be radial axes. Um, oh. Uh. Um. And and, and the other thing is called that, radial plot. Why is it? What, what's the axis thing word in there? Look at parallel axis also, and and. and. Has that been updated, Brett? Uh, that is from last night. I've made edits to it since then, but okay, not super updated, but somewhat. Okay, right. the, the now, examples have been reevaluated. This, this thing, parallel, it's it also goes by the name of parallel coordinates. So here's the thing: if you have a point in N D, you have N axes, and your point becomes a curve. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole theory geometric theory developed by Inselberg and others of sort of how to interpret things in this new geometry, which is not the classical Cartesian way of looking at things. It's a new way of looking at geometry and embeddings. And there are things that you can see, for instance, let's say that you have, you know, when you, when you plot like list plot, you have, you can see clusters of points, right? When they're together, can you tell that from these kinds of plots too? Let's say you had a thousand lines or something. Can you tell whether there is clustering? Mm -hmm. You know, so certain features you can learn to read in this kind of plot, and some some visualization systems like Tableau, a lot of R plots, they use this a lot because this this, this obviously very easily you get high dimensional data coming in from databases and and uh, you know. And other sources, <laughs> right? And we aren't doing it yet, but you then generalize what the types of axes Why are. Why are you repeating the the, the axis labels? Because uh, they aren't necessarily the same. I mean, I think in that case they are, and they're getting cut on. But the first one is different. Well, no, I'm not sure if it's the first it's one's different, off. or if it's just getting clipped. Somehow. I think it's oh, clipped. Oh. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's just because a... it's random real one. Yeah. Right, so. but if you look but at so... some of the other examples. If I were to pick these where one of the values was way different, these would be auto scaled, is that right? Right. Each each axis is independently auto scaled. Right. But there's a there's an aesthetic choice. If they're not too far away, are you gonna to try to use the same axis? Sure. 
or or when do you sort of start? Because if you use the same axis, you can kind of avoid using labeling. You can minimize labeling. What is the extent size? Uh, those got deleted earlier today. Good. Um. So, okay. And presumably, if I say here, mesh goes to all. I got dots. Why am I not getting dots? I'm not sure. Seems like a bug. So I think we're going to get pretty used to reading these kinds of plots, Stephen, because it's like, what do you do with high dimensional data? Why are the lines thinner? So. Uh, decreasing as the number, they're getting thinner as the number of curves increases. So that it's easier to detect <laughs> where That's things get. What did you doubled. do? It's a hundred axes. Oh, oh, it's a hundred axes. Okay. 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 That's the case you should deal with. Right? You need you need a way to prune down the axis. I mean, for sure the axis labels. Right. Um in a case like at, this. You... Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, at, at some point we should take a look at some of the notes in radial axis plot in B. Um because with you know, sort of an arbitrary number of axes, you then have, you know, sort of alternate ways of specifying what the styles are and that sort of thing. Okay, so if I say plot range here, zero to one, that will apply to which axis? Uh, why don't you take it down them. from 100? <laughs> <laughs> I try making it 0. 0.5 instead of one. I'm going to guess it's applying it to all of them, though. Yeah. Yeah. And and if you gave it a list, then it's just from left to right, or something. Presumably. Correct. So, for example, if I were to say here table, you know this thing, x, x, 0. 0.2, 2 and steps of 0. 0.2 or something. That's not even going to be the right number of them. It'll pad or something. That's entertaining. All right, let's talk about the names. OK. So actually, sorry, just one, one quick question before that, though, although maybe this is for radial axis plot. You know, this function here is kind of optimized for like if you have a bunch of things, or at least it seems like it's optimized for when you have many data points. And maybe there's an analogous thing with radial axis plot when you just want to plot, you know, many things, you know, in an equivalent way to having the thin lines below. Right. I mean, um, so what I've been coming around to, and this may affect naming, is that while the radial and the parallel cases are very similar syntactically and what the inputs <coughs> are and whatnot, the use cases are very different. Um, Why? I mean, that's a point. That's a single point, single third two-dimensional point, right? Right. But I mean, so my point in the use case being different is that it's very common to do a parallel axis plot with hundreds or, you know, however, you know, large number of these points, you know, so you have a thousand lines or whatever, but you don't really do that with the radar case. Well, you in can the do radar it. Radar case, well, you're I, looking at a sort of low. I don't think that's necessarily true. I think it'd be, you could look at many points, and then one of them pokes out, and the, you, you, you know, could the purple one pokes out. Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 sort of, I, I agree with you, Brett. I mean, I think that I think that it's 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 much it's much worse for this purpose. But I have seen it in a bunch of places where people do do radial axis plots with you know a thousand uh, points. Right. I mean, and, you know, my response to that may be that people do, people misuse visualizations all the time. Sure. <laughs> but I mean, um, I think it's particularly I mean but you wouldn't want the stock learning. setting or filling then, right? So, so it, 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 you wouldn't want the filling in the radial axis plot if you do that. You want the actual curves just. 
Right. And, um, and you wouldn't want the color and you'd want them thinner. And th th that's just why I was bringing it up because it seems like parallel axis plot is optimized so that for a small number of curves, it does something reasonable. And then it also yeah. kind of scales for a larger yeah. number. But the reason, Christopher, is the scenario that we saw repeatedly for this radio axis uh, was that people, they want to describe, let's say, product attributes. Here is a car. It has eight attributes and we want to compare these 20 cars because now we can look at the shapes <coughs> of the attribute yeah. plots for these cars let's say you can see that this is a luxury thing but it's not very um cheap <laughs> you know and i assume you can so. label these things right you can label all the different directions absolutely Right. And but by the way, I mean, this thing like is using different colors for every point, whereas this is using the same color for each point, but it has the possibility of having multiple uh, point sets. So in fact, this structure, if I were to feed this exact structure, it would be three colors in parallel axis plot, right? Uh, no, that would be two. I mean, one color. Yeah, you need to say list slash at that to get three colors. Oops. Okay, so that is not consistent there, yeah, but this, what? Oh. Um... Right, I guess this is the issue that, I mean, right. Are, are the question is, are these functions analogous or are they not? Yes, I think that's kind of, I mean, and the thing is that we can probably make them both ways with themes. It's a question of stock settings, okay? They can all, yeah. they can both do it. And can we make them, can there be themes that are sort of, that address these two kinds of scenarios? Okay, but, but let's talk about names for a second. I, I do want to make sure we cover some of these other functions and we should come back to these names after. I didn't know we were going to have this at all. So um, I also wonder whether these, these things should be grayed down. I think they should. No. Why? Why? Because, well, we just recently darkened them up <laughs> uh -oh. be because they need to be able to stand up against, you know, a dense set of curves. But look, this function has been very underdeveloped. The parallel axis one, we haven't really looked at it. It's, we haven't beaten on it at, at all at the same level as, as, as the radial axis one. All right. Anyway, I, it's a possibility. I mean, the radial one obviously is using grade grade down stuff. I mean, the the axis is darker, and the grid lines axis are is darker. Yes. Okay, but but anyway. Actually, so, the... so sorry. One other one other quick thing. So, right, the radial axis plot also, at least by default, does not scale its axes because of, for example, the car case. I guess. Um, but I mean, it depends. I mean, by default, no. I mean, by default, it's trying to use the same for everything. But it's possible to say, I want my third axis on, you know, a log scale or something, or I want my third axis to have, you know, a zero to ten range instead of zero to one hundred. Right. And as soon as you do that, then they all label. Is that can you do that with plot range or something right now? Like you can set the plot range on each axis. For this, um, yeah. what's the easiest right. way, man? I mean, like, like for example, if if I had you know, if I had if again, we with the car case, I have three parameters. I have I have cost and I have top speed, right? And I have some other ones, right? Then obviously the ranges right. for cost and top speed are very different. So, so, so do three goes to zero ten, and what three? Rule zero ten as a you know inside that list as a sparse input yeah yeah well actually let, let me go three goes zero to hundred so we'll see that one go practically to zero yeah that's really okay, nice and and it also now knows to uh, label all of them right. Even though its choice of what to label was pretty crazy. I'm not sure why it picked four. Well, it seems wrong to me. Yeah, it should be five because um, it should be zero in the middle. Um, what happens if I now say.
What if that's a negative number? What what if that number it, it's going to clip at 0? I see. Or actually, will it? Um, try or will it go negative? I, th I think it might actually put the negative number at the center. I don't remember off the top of my head. I guess, or, oh, oh. As, as in it will set the range. Okay, yes, I understand. Yeah. Wild. Oh, but, but it has a nice thick ring for zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's correct what it's doing there. Yeah. So the first axis, wait a minute, is this anti-clockwise or clockwise? Clockwise. Starting at the top? Yes. Okay. And I don't understand. Clockwise, how do it come to clockwise? Oh, minus three. Oh, minus boy, three is confusing. in the middle. Minus three is back on that no, side. No, that's five. No, 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 that's five. Two and then minus three is just in the middle, right? Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. It clipped. What? I'm totally confused. So if I said do, minus do, six. Do, do plot range goes to minus five to five or something. Right, so you had two, then you had minus three, which was inside of the zero circle. I see, all I the see. Way in the middle. I see. And then minus six was all the way to the, the middle because it was the lowest number. Yes. Right. right. Interesting. Okay. Oh yeah, these are kind of nice. Okay. So now I guess this has the effect that well, I guess all of these have the effect that if you set the plot range, you're changing the shape pretty significantly. Potentially, yeah. But well, you can see, so a lot of cases we see the, the 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 car attributes, but you can do that with people, like people's political opinions. You know, if you have. Um, you can compare sort of profiles. I mean, you see people do this all the time, and they, they can get sort of a sense of a of a shape. What was that? I saw a bug. There we go. Yep. I saw a bug. You want to screen capture it? Uh, can you hit the plus button on the? Thank you. Um. And also, in the future, we'll start to have categorical axes here. Yes, for an association, for example. No, for categorical scales. No, I understand that. But but if you've got values... Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Well, well so there's two kinds of categoricalization. One is categorical axes like this. This is your car speed, your car whatever. I mean, you should be able to take... I mean, that's what just happens axes right now. Level. Okay, but so yeah. right now, if I say radial axis plot. No, I mean categorical, like. No, I, I realize what you mean. Good, I, better, best. You know. Young, old. <laughs> and should it just assign basically numbers to those? Yes. Okay. That's weird, not what I would have expected. What I was thinking it would do is label the axes here. I think that's what it should do. I, think I, mean, I, I tend to think you're right. Um, yeah, because because you want you want to be able to have many different associations that all have the same shape, and if you give it a list of associations which are non-conforming in terms of their keys, then what it should do is you know overgenerate and show the things with with missings, you know, mm -hmm. with something missing between those. I think that's the right thing for it to do. That's you know how we normally deal with things. We take the union of the keys. Right. Okay. Um, oh, that's a good question from somebody there. What happens if there's an around in here? Let's see if you handled this case. I don't think we're supporting that yet. Okay. I mean, we aren't rendering the rotated error bars yet. Right. I understand. But an around in this plot would work. And a parallel access plot. There's no reason it should Conceivably, yes. I mean, it's probably not, also not handled yet other than, you know, showing the the mean or whatever. Yes. Um, the central value. Um, and, and potentially it's going to look not the best because your error bar is going to coincide with your axis. 
I know, but but it's going to have but it's going to have its serifs on the top and bottom, which helps. Yeah, and then good luck, you know, figuring out what the where'd that come from? Uh, Ethan yeah. just sent that on our live stream and pointed out it has no numbers on it. <laughs> okay, which I suppose is a, I mean, it, in marketing plot theme, I suppose in some amusing sense, it's some. Um, To the left, wait a minute. Does pie chart rotate the same way as radial axis plot? Pie chart rotates clockwise starting at the left. Okay. But, but there radial... we parameterized the whole thing, didn't we? Yeah, so through sector yeah. origin. Which is different from radial axis plot. Which is different from polar plot and list polar plot. Right, which obviously has a positive x-axis. Um, and goes counterclockwise. So wait, actually, well, yeah. I mean, I, I guess one one thing is back back a little bit, but it seems like you know maybe we do also need a proper way of showing uh, error bars when there are lot when there's lots of data because I've run into this issue as well when it's like oh here's you know a hundred thousand uh, things to plot. And show the error bars in maybe a way where you can kind of tell what's going on. And right now, you just sort of get a hedgehog of error bars. <laughs> yeah. So. I think that we have actually, there's a lot of things to do to deal with uncertainty visualization to come. You know, and there's a, lot the... of, there's a lot of visualizations that don't yet support it, for instance. Yeah, I mean, like, like one, one example, I mean, I, I don't know if this is actually an effective visualization, but I've certainly seen this is where you, you know, you even just like for for list line plot, where you basically show the mean in the middle, and then you show the you know the upper error bound and the lower error bound as two separate lines. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I guess I don't know. There are things like this that maybe make right. I mean, then that can be done with interval markers goes to bands or something like that. Oh, really? Okay, nice. Um, so somebody was on our live stream was pointing out. Let's see if I can get this to paste in here. A plot like this, which has some kind of glow. I don't really know what the, what is actually happening here. Why does it glow? What makes that look as if it's glowing and this one not? The layered transparency on the rings. Or they might just have some sort of blurring thing on the edges or something. Apparently, this is called hypno glow. I don't know. We should look at it. Okay. Um, uh, okay, let's see. Um, right, and I assume that I, I think that, that the polygonal version is. Hey, better. here you see a typical thing that I was talking about, like like looking at shapes for attributes for different products in this case. Oh, and by the way, they've also they've also made. Uh, is this something we can do? Can we have an interpolation order here? Um, we should be able to. Um, I think that the interpol. I mean, yeah, I, I guess you, you could have that option, but it does seem like I, I think that's a much. It's in the marketing th plot theme category. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we could even set it for. No. Um. Okay, arrow 3D. We, do, we don't have an arrow 3D, do we, yet? Why don't we have an arrow 3D? Because we have arrow. And an arrow the, just works in 3D. It, it works in 3D, and you, I mean, you can use arrowheads to get the 3D rendering. I see. Okay, somebody ages ago in the live stream was asking about topological data analysis. Actually, in the next few weeks, there'll be a persistent homology package that is being, uh, should be posted in the function repository. And other people were asking about Sankey diagrams, which I know we have thought about. So not for this release, but yes, it's come <laughs> up again. Right. All right, let, let's go on here, because I think we're going to have to come back to some of these things anyway. I just want to get a sense of what's here. Complex array plot. 
why is this something we, we haven't had this before? This is, oh, I see. This is just values. This is complex valued functions. Oh boy. What happens? I see. So if I, if I take, you, you're telling me if I have a random complex function here, no. How does it decide what it does? No, it's it's data. It's it's. No, it's, I, I realize it's data, but I mean, if I say, uh, cool. random complex here, and then I say, I don't know, minus i minus one. By the way, I assume a ray plot. It'll just make them red or something. Or a ray plot uses the colors by like the absolute value or something it reduces it okay. down because i guess if, if it doesn't i mean if it just fails okay fine if it had just failed maybe we wouldn't need a separate function for it but yeah. right so, so this is using the same colors as complex plot with the arg shape or with the arg coloring but so the arg here i don't understand so the arg is the coloring and the intensity is the is the abs correct so, for example, if I were to do an, I don't know what I can do here, an exponential or something, I would get, um, I don't really understand exactly why I got that, but whatever. Well, you might might want to get an example from the complex plot or whatever. Yes, but but basically what you're saying is if the thing is just varying in real, in, in absolute value, I'll just see an intensity variation Mm -hmm. If you use table instead, Stephen, you would evaluate it at not random points, but sort of along. Okay, there's a there's a um, uh, this is a description on the live stream about how to. Oh, I see. Yeah, you're right. It's blurring plus normal gives glow, which is obviously trivial for us to implement, but we haven't done it. It's a good idea. It's kind of cute. Blurred plus normal equals glow. So it seems like it's a it's a image compose of a oh, I won't actually do it of a blur versus a um, thing. All right. So anyway, anything to discuss about this? This seems uncontroversial. All right. I really want to see a array plot three D because I've right. been waiting and for array plot three D for for fifteen years. <laughs> and and you gave us you know some guidance on colors you know a month ago or so, um, but I expect there will be more. All right, so let's let's take a look at array plot three D. Yeah. Okay, so now. So, so this is totally the visualization of this is totally independent of image three D. Correct. There is a method that uses effectively the same mechanism. Okay. Right, but by default, it's using geometry instead of raster three D, so that. I mean, you get better depth queuing because it interacts right. with the lighting in a you know more familiar way. I've also um, found that I don't know if this is a bug or something. I mean, I found that often image 3D is often slower than just doing geometry for big, relatively big things. Wow, this is really broken. This this help <laughs> system is really broken here. Um, what am I going to do? Go back to the regular. Version. I was going to say there should be examples in array plot 3D docs. I know, but they seem really lame. Okay, fine. You should look at the 3D cellular automaton examples here. Um, I'm pretty sure that's where we pulled from. Ah, oh, these examples have all been updated to use image 3D. Well, so let's take a look here. That guy, and now let's say array plot 3D. Well, that's a lot better than this. Okay, now let's go for something more serious. Well, actually, it's, sometimes it's a little hard to see what's going on when it's sort of all over overlapped. I think that I think that having dark is not the best. No, I agree. I agree. Can we can we make a different color here? Is there? A, is uh, there... You can use color rules is the easiest way. But just say just say color rules. 
goes to one goes to you know, something. We'll see if it washes out entirely. In which case, we does it have, have borders? Set uh, at that scale, no. Set lighting does goes it have to lighting? neutral. Um, set lighting goes to neutral, or sorry, lighting goes to automatic. Phew, it's pretty ghostly. In some orientations, at least. Mm -hmm. I guess this is the value of the image 3D, uh, the, the fog. Right. I mean, if, if you drop a little bit lower in your steps, you know, say to like 20 or something, then you're getting the edges drawn on it. It's still not looking beautiful. I mean, it, no, it's it's looking, it is looking beautiful, but it's not looking. It's, it's not a color you like yet. Does a ray plot have numbers by default? It doesn't, does it? Nor should this. Okay. Um, let's take a look. Boy, what can we do here? I mean, I wonder what happens if we just... I feel like the lighting error automatic might make it all a bit strange. Yeah. Tim, comments? So that's neutral lighting. Look, I think, you know, we live in modern times. Let's make it a little bit livelier than just black. Okay. I don't think black really helps anything here. Right. Right. Initially, it was, I think, like pure black almost. And it was just. <laughs> no, it's like when you have a, a black dog, you can hardly see its facial features. It's just so hard because the, the, the con <laughs> contrast isn't enough. I had no idea. Okay. What color is your current dog? Well, it's it's light brown. Okay. <laughs> that's that's easier. Um I mean, do you want us to try to match that image 3D sort of thing? Not or? really. No, okay. I don't think so. I mean, we could for consistency maybe, but I don't think it's great. Okay, I was just asking because it seemed like we sort of managed to almost do that by accident. Um, Somehow this gray actually doesn't look bad. The black looked bad, but this gray is not looking so bad. Well, the black before wasn't actually black, was it? No, no it was, it was like a dark gray. But I think this lighter gray really doesn't look bad. I like the contrast that it's giving. Yeah, that's decent contrast now. Maybe I'm taking my... Taking it back. I mean, we could have a, you know, a, a blast of color, but maybe this is okay. I mean, the only thing is, so the the general issue with this though is that, for example, you can barely see those triangles inside the, you know what I mean? Like the big faces have triangles on them, but it's a bit hard to see. I mean, maybe that's just the nature of this type of visualization. <laughs> I think but, that's going to be the nature. Yeah. Um, so I wonder what happens if you lighten the edges. I don't know. Can we do that? Well, actually, unfortunately. Uh, mesh style, yeah. Try mesh style goes to white. Okay, hold on. Let me just try something here. That might be a little dangerous. Well, you need to set. Oh. I assumed you would need to set an opacity or something before that is really at all useful. Why am I not seeing I'm not sure why that. it's not coloring zero. Well, but if it did, we'd just see a big brick, wouldn't we? Right. You'd see like one white square on each face or something where. Yeah, where it pokes out. Who knows? That's not working. Yeah, that, oh. that, that looks like a bug. Okay, now you're saying oh, mesh rules. Oh, so, so sorry. That's because it's being tied to something else. The set opacity function goes to none.
I have to go to another meeting in a moment here. Okay, we're waiting, we're waiting, waiting for a long time here. Yeah. Has to render Spinning. a lot more cubes. <laughs> exactly. And it crashed. Oh. Whoa. That was fun. Um how do we make it look like Minecraft is a question we have here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, we need to look at this some more, and I need to, but I think we were, we had, can I just cover this question here, the geo region value sure. plot question? What did this? So oh. the question here is how, you know, whether the color function is a discrete set of colors or whether it's continuous, you know, a continuous gradient. Surely a gradient, it's values. I mean, this is the thing is that there are a bunch of, it's a, for example, if you use like a most GIS programs by default, they don't do a gradient, they bin it. And like yeah. in a lot of places people bin it, but I personally find that binning it is really annoying and I hate it. And well, maybe they bin it because they used to have thing. color maps in 1982 or something and they never changed it. No, I think they bin it because they feel it's easier to match a rough color to a bin than trying to match. But it depends what you're doing then. So in other words, if you're it, doing it- It makes it, it easier label... to compare to the, it, may, it does definitely make it easier to compare to the key. But the two, the, I mean, the reasons why I don't particularly like it is because first of all, you know, very often you don't care about comparing to the legend. You just want to look at the relative stuff. Look, I think and, the difference is, Right. One thing would be if you're using colors to indicate the forest service region versus the you know water region or whatever, then you want you know different colors. But if you're using it to actually plot data, you you want continuous gradient. Yeah, well, this is geo region value plot, not geo list plot. So I think it, you're plotting data. Well, except you might be. Yes, I agree. But the, the GIS systems might be plotting, might be wanting to use that as a way to distinguish. You know, this. Well, no, like, like for example, in QGIS, which is the only one I've, I've actually ever used, uh, they make a distinction. Even if you are doing gradient, a gradient as opposed to categorical data, it still bins it. I mean, although I, I would say it also generally does a fair number of bins. So I, I found, like for example, with GeoRegion Value Plot, it'll often do things like give you two bins or three bins, which right. is, I mean, and yeah. The current approach is it shouldn't get, you know, it's aiming for about five bins. I don't think um, binning is a good idea by default. I just don't think it's a good idea. I think we should have an option that determines whether it does that, but I just don't think it's a good idea. I mean, it's totally misleading. How is it totally misleading? Look, look, this says, you know, I might conclude from this that, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know my regions of China, so let's go to this <laughs> one here. You know, that Argentina and... Uh, that Paraguay uh, and, uh, you know, Paraguay and, uh, and Brazil. Bolivia have the same, uh, have the same uh, deposit interest rate when in fact they are different, but... Yes, right, exactly. Chile, yeah. Peru. I mean, so they're, they're... Right, so you want to be able to distinguish those is what... Is that right. what you're so saying? I'm saying I think it's more honest plotting to allow those colors to be different and to have some setting that makes you, you know, that forces it to be binned. I think this is just misleading. I, I don't see any argument to do this by default. In fact, uh, there's okay. strong reasons to not do it by default. Is there an option to? to see what it would look like with a gradient. Uh, go, go down to a color, go to the color function option setting. I don't know if how up to date this notebook is, but okay. So here we have set option. Um, what? Uh, Which uh, option? Uh, scroll up a little bit. Should, okay. Oh, there, top one. Although this is a little bit of a crazy, maybe may take the, it's a bit of a crazy color function, but um, right. So what maybe we want copy to, it up to the South America. I mean, 
and your chance of more. being able to reevaluate this it's been changing you know, every okay. day for the past week as we okay fine iron bugs okay, out i strongly it. think that that picture should have different yellows there yeah i mean i like that's a that's a bit of a bad <laughs> picture for the big case that one there <laughs> that's, that's yes. the extreme case um it's just but anyway, so if we go back wrong. to the color yeah. function section real quick, yeah. Um, I, I, and I mean, maybe I mean, we'll probably revisit this again in the follow-up meeting. Um, so we have. Um, so this is design-wise, sort of following what we came up with for complex plot, where we have a list form of the color function that. Um, further informs what the, you know, how the colors are treated or whatever. Um, yes. Possibly it should be a separate option. We can discuss. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you say, you know, color function none. I claim the, it should be called color aggregation function or something, that extra thing. That seems really there, long. Yeah, I mean, are there any other functions that do things like this? We could imagine doing it for everything. We could imagine doing it for lots of things that have color functions. Agreed. Look, if, if it's good for, you know, if it's good for geo region value, then why the heck isn't it good for other things that that way you're telling things by colors? Right. Yes. Um, so, um, but anyway, so so we have, you know, don't do any classification or segmentation or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then you get the you know sort of continuous gradient um, in the plot and in the yeah I get it legend. and then the next one is you have six values and the next one is you're using k-means clustering etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. exactly yeah okay Fisnick on our live stream is saying all color scaling is misleading that's also my claim <laughs> um, the uh, let's see. There's a question here from Ethan about attached ribbon graphics plan. What is that? Attached ribbon. You know this thing? Oh, 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 oh! Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely, that is planned. We're not seeing it here, but but yes, an attached an attached cell underneath is absolutely planned. Right. Um. I think we're going to have to wrap for now here. We're going to come back to this, but can we can we see some versions of this? And can we also talk about having that color granulation function, color, color aggregation function, whatever it's called, as a thing that could be applied where wherever color function is used, so to speak? I, I think so. I mean, I think there's some places, places where it would be perhaps a bit weird. Yeah. Right. So Matrix. where it will be weird is is all the continuous things like plot 3D. Yeah. Um, that will look very bad right now if we just use that. I am not certain about that. I, I think it will. Well, I, I, it, it will. It'll turn because into it'll have contour, contour levels. Plot. Oh, because I see. Because you're not you you you're not going in and and figuring out the contours. Is what yes. you're saying. Yes. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Right. But I Do mean, that, we can make stuff. it look sharp. But it's it. Yeah, right. That's more work. But but I understand. But at least if you know that it's an aggregation function, you can see that it's going to do something where it's, um, uh, you know, well, okay, but something like matrix plot, you could perfectly well do this. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or array plot or, yeah. Yes. Or, or bar chart or list plot or, you know, with points or, you know, anything that has discrete elements is... Yeah, right. very amenable to this. Hmm. Okay. What is right. point? Right. I, I'm 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 really being bad here because I really need to go to this next meeting. But don't look at it. Your docs are out of date. What is it even roughly? A generalization of bubble chart. Bubble chart list plot. So the idea is that for each point, so we need this for this spatial statistics. Um, but but the, it's a very general idea, which is that let's say that you want to plot a bunch of attributes for different points. And it happens in geographics a lot. Let's say that you have a city with a bunch of attributes. How do you show them? Yeah, you okay. show so a, you're going to have little radar plots at every point. Exactly. 
You yeah, can okay. have little radar plots, bar charts, pie charts. Um, that's an interesting line idea. plots, yeah, um, okay. other that. shapes, lots of things. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. All right, I look forward to seeing that next time. Um, all right, we should wrap for right now. Uh, look forward to coming back to this soon. Yep. Um, okay, good stuff. All right, okay. thanks to cool. comments on the live stream.